Hello, awesome people. We're going to take a look at the final novel, uh, The Steel Czar in the uh, Nomad of Time Streams uh, series, that I'll, the trilogy that I'll link you to uh, below from Borrelius, uh, Fantasy, and such. Um, this is the final uh, novel, uh, and the Steel Czar um, is is another of these alternate universes uh, where Basil is hopping from one place to another place to another place. If you remember, he's a 1902 uh, Brit British soldier uh, who is in, a, in the Internal Champions series, uh, and such one was sent in time. He was very pro-British and pro-colonialism uh, back in the days, but the first novel, sorts of eventually, takes a while, uh, will disabuse him of that. Second novel, it's all about how racism is bad uh, and such, and that will also disabuse him of any of those notions uh, and such. Uh, and then the third novel um, is definitely is sort of the final finale of this and such. So, the, so here's what's happening here uh, for you folks. Um, the key core to concept is, is that World War One didn't happen, uh, and then America uh, was uh, lost. Uh, the, the Confederate States have, have gone separate, uh, lost the Civil War in the northern side um, and that reduces its power so when uh, the japan empire is looking to start right being prepared against the next uh, world war instead of them bombing pearl harbor they're going to bomb uh, the british uh, utopia of singapore uh, and so so that's sort of the inciting of event for a giant war that'll be happening um, in this deal's art now our character oswald basable was in singapore from uh, an airships that are available if you recall all three of these have airships like the ones you see on this cover um, and so what's happening uh, is, is that he is he is him and another one crashed and they were brought uh, as a survivor uh, in the singapore uh, and such so he's one of the survivors but but he's mostly healed uh, by now so that so him and the other hospital uh, people are evacuated uh, from singapore unsent elsewhere um, and such and they are sent but they're chased uh, by fighters uh, and such and so they crash um, and eventually he winds up in, in a far-flung island called row island row island is actually uh, a location in the first book uh, where he finds where he winds up in 1902 uh, and meets michael moorcock's grandfather where he tells his story to it's a far-flung edge of the uh, british empire right it's where everybody goes if they want to Get get forgotten by the rest of the world, right? So he winds up on Rhode Island again with different people, right, uh, and such. Uh, so what's happening in this case is, is that uh, he uh, uh, he'll 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 arrive. He'll want to start to sort of rebuild things. We'll find out what's it, what it's like to be there in the middle of a war that's just started, right, and such with a lot of things that are happening. So again, it's a lot of fun stuff that's happening. This is again the seals art, and it is named after a character in Russia who is a Georgian. Uh, who a priest who um, has started a huge rebellion in the Cossacks who supported the Russia Russia in this world has been a, a republic under Kerensky President Kerensky instead of communist although they're still socialist but they're not communist they're just socialist and such and he's more uh, socialist and such and this probably is Stalin right Stalin was the man in steel and this is uh, the steel czar right so it's probably it's probably a Stalin version of it because this is about because this would be world war ii uh timelines i uh, said so there you are this is the second this is the final novel for you i also think that this one is a little less good than the previous two the previous two i gave seven and a half stupid i feel like this one's probably more of a seven out of uh, ten for you folks i just don't think like it's just six else fast i knocked it out like three days it's only 150 pages long you can blow through it uh but you know it's, it has some issues with it right uh thinking about it and such so i'm giving this probably more of a sudden i've had to uh, michael moorcock was hugely influential on fantasy although this is sci-fi um and two and also on the british new wave of sci-fi too in the 60s and 70s uh, so that's kind of fun uh, with his internal champion stuff, with the multiverse combat, the concept of the multiverse, the law versus chaos. He was hugely influential. Um, on, he, he's in Appendix uh, N for Gary Gygax, uh, as, who listed a bunch of uh, popular how, things that helped him grow and develop his game, Dungeons and Dragons, in the first edition, uh, Dungeons and uh, Master's Guide. Uh, and then, so things like that, right? So he's hugely influential. So you have to read it and such, but this uh, I like this. I think it's fun, but I just don't think it's, it's it's as good as the first two, right? And being this grippingly strong story, right? And such. So there you are. I'll go ahead and leave you to it. Uh, so that is the Steel Zar for you, folks. Have you read it? If so, what'd you think about it? 
or sorry, in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, why not hit that subscribe button because there's going to be a lot more of these to follow. As a reminder, the channel's name is The Worst Thing About New Books, which is a quote by a French philosopher, Jacques Chupin. He said that the worst thing about new books was that they kept us from reading the old ones, right? And this is definitely an older work that's written, you know, decades ago before I was born. Uh, so there you are. Finally, I just want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and investing it and watching my video. Because we all have so many things that are happening in our lives and are pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me, that's incredibly humbling and I appreciate it. So thanks again and have an amazing day.